and this is how to be a tea and coffee specialist at Sabian. here at Sabian? Yeah there's lots of different strands to the mission really. Um, when I first started I was just desperate to get out of nursing. I've been, I'm a mental health nurse, I have been for a while and I got to the stage where I absolutely hated it and was just desperate to get out of it. Um, saw the shop, shop come vacant and went for that really uh, before deciding what we were going to do with it. Um, once we thought about it, I was very keen to actually have something that was like, very keen on the whole farm to fork thing. Um, and wanting to sort of actually people to know where their food came from and all that type of stuff and knowing, having more information about the food that they were eating. Um, my son, Iwan, was had done barista training, City and Guilds, so he knew about the coffee side of it. Um, and at home we had a tea and coffee shelf that was just overflowing. Um, he'd bring teas home from various places, he'd bring coffee home. Uh, we had a bit of a mission at one time to go off and find the best flat white in North Wales. So we'd go around different cafes and stuff like that and score them. <laughs> um, sort of like this, we, we, the plan was to start a vlog on oh, okay. the best flat white in North Wales. Oh wow. Um, we ne it never got very far because we opened the shop instead. Yeah. Um, and when I was a nurse, payday, I could afford to go out for a cup of coffee. Hmm. The rest of the months I couldn't. Right. So part of it for me was actually having resources available to actually make the best cup of coffee that you can, but make it at home. So you actually didn't have to pay your two pound, whatever it was, to go out and have a cup of coffee. And you could actually make just the same thing at home. So that's what I was interested in. I was, that's what I was keen to do, was to make that accessible to people. Um, and initially, it was all about the coffee. The tea was just an additional thing. We started off as a cafe because we thought that was a done thing. But before the end of the summer, the council came along and said we didn't have planning permission to be a cafe. So we had a staff meeting in Mulberry, as you do. <laughs> and we all decided we'd go back to being a shop with tastings, which is what we'd originally wanted to be. Um, Iwan, by this stage, was working in Vinamondo, and so we decided that we were going to do sort of a tea and coffee, but you could actually taste anything. We'd have tasting notes in the same way as you did with wine and craft beer and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So that's what, that's what the plan yeah. was. Okay, great. So how do you think your shop differs to other tea and coffee specialists? I think because we don't focus on the selling of the tea or the coffee. It's about actually educating people. It's about finding exactly what it is that they need um, to get the result that they want. So people will come in here now and they will say, I've decided I want to stop drinking instant coffee. What's the best way for me to go about it? And we'll tell them the whole range of teas and coffees and kit, but we gear it for actually what they need. So if they're gonna be realistically buying their coffee from the supermarket, supermarket ground coffee comes as a mid grind, middle grind, medium grind. So there's no purpose at all in me selling them a machine that is gonna do them I th it's no point being me selling them a cafetiere mm. or a stove top because that's coffee that they're going to be able to get so they may yeah. as well have the way that they're actually going to be able to make their coffee yeah so it's it perfect for what they want yeah so the cheapest way to do that is the v60 which is a little bit of plastic filter on top of your cup coffee in it water done yeah. you know it costs them 10 pounds to start off with yeah whereas and I mean, to be honest, the, even if they do a stove top, it's not going to be any more expensive, but then you've got the issue of having the coffee that's ground properly for it. Yeah. You know, so it's actually not thinking about how are we going to make the most money. It's actually thinking what's best for them. Also, they can have a taste of absolutely anything. Any tea, any coffee in the shop, made however they want. So if somebody regularly drinks a coffee at home that's done by a cafetiere there's no point in me actually 
making them a coffee through the espresso machine because they're not going to like it. No. Do you know, it's about for them to try a coffee that is the way that they're going to make it at home. Mm. I may as well make it for them like make, make, make it at home. Yeah. You know? um, so why Japan? Japan, because I got offered a place on the course. It was originally supposed to be China. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the plan was to travel. Um, this year I was going to be doing travelling. Yeah. Um, my plan was China, mm -hmm. southern China to Yunnan originally. I'd added a couple of places more into there, but my sister-in-law was supposed to be my guide on it, and she's Chinese. But her area of China doesn't grow tea pretty much anyway. And she really didn't know an awful lot about, um, about the areas that we were going to. So, you know, it was going to be one of those things. It was either going to work or it wasn't going to work, but it was going to be a nice trip anyway. Yeah. Then I applied for this course in Japan yeah. and got offered a place on it, which I didn't expect to. Um, so I went on that instead. So China's on hold for a couple of years. I've had my Japanese encephalitis vaccine, so it's gonna, I've got to go to China yeah. before that expires. So it's, it's probably not next year, it's probably going to be the year after. Yeah. Do you think the teas vary? Okay, so when did you first come up with the idea to open a shop and what made you think of Conway in particular? Um, there wasn't anything that made me think of Conway in particular. Yuan was working in Binamondo, um, the shop came vacant and that was it really. I took the lease on the shop before we decided what we were going to do with it um, and then decided it was going to be tea and coffee. Yeah. Pure coincidence. No, if anything it was out of the way because at that point there was wasn't much going on up this little road. Mm. Um, since then it's become far more sort of artisan foodie area and I think it's going to carry on doing that really. Yeah, it's on um, the way up Conway. It is, sure, yes, yeah. and this little road as well. Um, we've done various things to try and make it more visible from the square mm. and one of the people on the course suggested that I put a chart sign in the window and that made a huge difference. It now oh. glows from Lancaster Square. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. Okay, so do you think travelling inspired your specialism in tea and coffee? I think it's more the other way around. Oh, really? Yes, okay. I think the tea and coffee has boosted the travelling, really. Yeah. Travelled years ago, um, but when the kids were little, didn't really do much and didn't do much after that because I couldn't afford it. Mm. Um, and it's only now that I've got older and retiring and sort of, I've now got a purpose to travel rather than just travelling for the sake of it, which is what I used to do. Yeah. I used to travel as a tourist. Yeah, um, yeah. I was married to a marine engineer, so went off travelling with him. I travelled at sea with him, yeah. and and that was just being a tourist, really. Mm. Whereas now it's travelling with a purpose and yeah. with an intention, and it just feels very much more complete and more rounded now. Yeah, Do you know I mean it's completely yeah. different, isn't it? When completely where different. you're going, yes, so. and it's very you know so the whole culture of tea in China and Japan is just amazing, and mm. and it the tea culture fits into everything there, mm, mm. you know, especially in the area of Japan that I was in, yeah. everything is about the tea. Yeah. You know, and you go to places like Kyoto and Uji and Nara and stuff, mm. and it's all about the tea. Yeah. You've got whole streets full of tea shops, and the smell of tea in the streets is just, you know, you go to Manchester, it's the smell of weed. Here it's the smell, it, there it's the smell of tea, you know? Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. everywhere you go, you have the smell of this hojicha roasting. Oh, nice. That's in incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, it wasn't green tea, it's loose leaf tea. Yeah. Okay, all right, let me stop that <laughs> I love that you do tea, tea tasting evenings. What a fab idea for customers to meet and try something new. When were you first introduced to loose leaf tea and what was it? Oh, right, loose leaf tea. I'm of the generation that grew up having only loose leaf tea before tea bags <laughs> and it was disgusting because you'd have your leaves in the bottom of the cup. Oh right. Yeah, um, so you'd always leave about that much in the bottom of the cup because yeah. the leaves all floated in the milk at the bottom. Oh wow. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so the first proper interesting nice tea that I had was Lapsang Suchong and I was going out with a lad from who lived near Bolton and he had this in his cupboard and that's the very first time I actually had a tea that was anything different to an ordinary tea bag Thai food type stuff. Yeah. And I always, after that, had glass of souchong in my cupboard. Wow. Always. And every, even now, I open that jar and it, it takes me straight back to the first time I had it. So is that, what type of tea is that then? It's a smoked black tea, it's Chinese. Yeah. Um, but it's specially done for the Western market, so you'll have ordinary lapsang souchong, 
it's a smoky tea. Then you'll have tarry lapsang suchong, but you also get crocodile lapsang suchong, which is really intense as far as I'm aware, I don't know. I bought some traditional Chinese lapsang suchong direct from China. Yeah. None of that flavour there. When you taste it, it's just that sort of very delicate kind of malt whiskey kind of flavour. Okay. Um, and that's really nice, but people smell it and say, oh no, I'll go for the smelly one. Oh, really? Yes, because that's what they expect from lapsang suchong. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Yeah. But that's the first one. That's a quite an interesting tea. I think my first tea was just a normal, like, Tetley's tea. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit boring compared to your story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've recently um, taken a tea masterclass in um, Japan. What was it like? It was it was full on. It was two weeks. We had the Saturday night off in the middle, and there was no accommodation for us on the Saturday night, so we had to go out to this town. Um, I went because this course was so traditional. The place we were staying was so traditional. Um, I just went to Kyoto and stayed in one of these capsule hotels. Um, so it's something else that the Japanese do really well. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. This is basically it's just a room that's the size of your bed. Um, <laughs> you have, you're given an iPhone and you control your lighting, the shape, size of your, the shape of your bed, the fan in your bedroom, all that kind of stuff, and you just control all of that from your room, from, so your, cool. from your iPhone. Wow. It was bizarre. It was yeah. Really bizarre. We had a floor for men, a floor for women. Wow. Yeah. Do you have like a door or some sort of thing? That it's you can like show? more of a screen than a door. Oh right. Yeah, and you just pulled it down. Oh, and it clicked right. to the bottom, yeah. Did it like, did you hear anything else? When you I used earplugs anyway. I oh, did it. you? If I'm somewhere like that, I'll always use earplugs. Yeah. yeah. But that was an experience, something like I wanted to Totally, yeah. Definitely. It was bizarre. Yeah. From the street, you'd never find the shop, never find it because it was into a shop and you go up in the lift. Yeah. Course was, it was a really well done course because you started off general and then you got a lot more specific mm. as the course went on. Mm. We tried different teas, we learned about the, the farms, different teas. We went and picked tea with, um, on the farm, we took it back to the factory and we processed it that day and we made our own black Japanese black tea. Wow. Um, we went then to have a look at other farmers, different styles of farming, organic farming, small farm, we, massive farms, um, factories, we went to a massive matcha factory and uh, we went to a tea auction. Um, what else did we do? We had all sorts of stuff, all sorts. <laughs> we made, I don't know how much tea I drank was ridiculous. <laughs> um, and I was really worried because I'd always start the day with a coffee and I thought mm. I'm never going to manage without coffee in the morning. No. Um, but we had so much tea and so much caffeine in the tea that yeah. it, you didn't notice it. Um, learned such a lot. Yeah. Also, reinforced how much I already knew yeah um, but it really it developed my knowledge of Japanese teas to such an extent that I'm just passionate about them I sort of I want to be the expert the most sort of specialist shop in North Wales and, and more mm. selling tea I mean I'm the only person the only shop in the UK that's selling this Japanese white tea from this farmer yeah nobody else in the UK selling it yeah. I bought all of his stock. Did you? I did, 300 grams. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, like, how do you think that these courses have helped your oh, business? But yeah, absolutely. By your answer, yeah. Hugely, yes. Yeah. I mean, see, since I came back, the business has just shot up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it's because of the whole Japanese tea thing, because of the sign on the, on the window, or whether it's just because it's summer. Mm -hmm. But the business is just growing and growing. It's crazy how much it's growing. I think as well with your knowledge now, yeah. it's it's gonna it is gonna help you massively. Just Absolutely. like you said, yeah. you've got certain people coming in asking yeah. for you know yes. specific yeah very much so specific things that you might not have sold before, but yeah. now you're just kind of like yes. oh I know what it is I know which farm I can go to to get it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Um, because knowing how they grow tea in one area. It's like a transferable skill. I now understand how they grow tea in other areas. Mm. So the oolongs, I buy direct from a farmer in China. Yeah. And and I know that that's an organic farm. I know that it's high mountain. Yeah. And so now, based on what I know about how they produce the tea in Bazooka, I now know how they produce the tea in that place as well. Yeah. Do you know? And it's just, it's just actually using that transferable knowledge. Yeah. 
I can actually smell the field in what well, in the Chinese place as well now. You see, yeah, because like, now I know how the smoke, how tea fields smell. Yeah, yeah, I, I know how they smell there. It's so good because a lot of people they want that experience when yes. they drink their tea. Yes. They don't just and I think it. that's a big responsibility on me now to mm. actually share that knowledge with customers. Yeah, for which sure. is why I did a big post today yeah. on the white tea and feedback I've had on it already has just been great. So that's what you absolutely. need. Is, yes, yeah, yeah. Need to balance, well. do that with as many. You mentioned well. your um, your website, mm -hmm. and I've seen that it's yeah. really detailed, and you've got a lot of blog posts informing and educating customers yeah. about different teas. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, it's important to have such an updated website for a business? Yes. Um, for me, as a business, um, the whole idea was actually it was going to be easy. It's going to be something that sort of I don't have to work hard at. Mm. That it's going to be fun to come to work, mm. and I want everybody else who works here to be able to enjoy it. And in order to do that, you have to just take a lot of the pressure off. And by actually having a good website, mm. is actually bringing sales in. It just you're making as much money from website exactly. sales as actually having to work in the shop doing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was one of these people who thought, oh, as soon as we've got a website, it's just going to go through the roof. No, yeah. it doesn't work like that. No. It's just a slow plod, and eventually you'll get the footfall there, and eventually you'll get sales based on that. Yeah. What I've managed to do today, which I'm really pleased about, is I've linked in Instagram to okay. their website. Oh, cool. Yes. It's so, much easier to post then. Well, it means that actually people can buy direct from Instagram then. Oh, yes, yes, yes it can, yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Because I've been trying to figure out how to do that for a while. Oh, and you did it all by yourself? Well, it offered me the option to do it. Oh, okay. Yes. And I'm like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. Yeah. yeah. It's good when, like, I mean, I've learned a lot about my blog and stuff on my website, and it's really good when you learn things yourself. Yeah. Because it makes you more sustainable. Yeah. And, yes, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is just the last one now. So, where do you see your business um, in the next year? In the next year, I want to be working here all the time. I think the way the business is developing, it's going to, up to now, we have one person working in the shop at any one time. Mm. We've not needed anybody else. Yeah. And it's been fine, easy to run with just one person. Yeah. It's getting beyond that stage. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, and I'm finding, I hear more often when I've actually got days off. Mm. And it just makes such a difference when there's two of us. Mm. Partly because I'm the one who knows about all the teas. Yes. And then yes. the staff can learn from me then. Yeah. And quite quite often, if I'm serving somebody, they'll just the staff will be there, sort of learning from what I'm saying to the customer. You know. Yeah. Um. And it's if you're going to call yourself a specialist shop, you need to have staff that are specialists as well. It's not just the person who owns it. Yeah, of course. Do you know, so they need to be able to learn as much about all of the teas. They need to know what they're selling. Yeah. And definitely. you know, sort of. It's. I've got one staff member who's really into her coffees. Doesn't mm. like tea, mm. but she's now drinking three teas. Oh wow! Yes, I'm dead smug about that. Yeah. Says, yes. <laughs> um, and Carissa, who's gone off on her travels, knows loads about teas. She's yeah. re really a proper tea geek. Um, Laura's just starting work now, and she's another tea geek. Admits that she doesn't know much, but you know, she so she'll, yeah, she loves her tea, so yeah. she'll soon learn. She does actually know more than she thinks she does. Yeah, having spoken to her, yeah, yeah, you know, there's not many people who know lots about poor fair play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy yeah. with that, yeah, you okay. know. So, yeah, I think that's one way that it's going to go. Um, we had to think about starting events and stuff like that, but I think okay. that's too much like hard work, yeah. And I think what we'll do instead is just focus on the website, yeah, and, and maybe more like tea tastings. We do tea tastings every month anyway. The yeah. last evening of every month, there is always a tea tasting. If it's one person, if it's eight people, that's fine. Either way, it goes ahead. Yeah. Um, and I will be here even if nobody's booked. Yeah. You know, so if somebody's just walking by, then that's fine. Um, we've got our first one that's actually in the daytime, uh, in the middle of September. We've got a matcha workshop because it's, you can't have matcha taste. That can't have a matcha workshop <laughs> in the evening because they won't sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was on a Sunday afternoon. Um, people are asking us to do coffee tastings, but the way I look at it, there's another, there's other good coffee shops that do coffee tastings. Mm. I'm not sure I want to be treading on their toes by doing coffee tastings, but people want us to do them, so we may do. Yeah. So you no, know, so, yeah. So that's yeah. the end of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> it's all done. Thank you very much.